Today I'm going to give you a basic introduction to FigJam so you can start using it for brainstorming, for mapping user flows and doing whiteboard exercises with your team. So FigJam is accessed through Figma and as you can see here there are a bunch of different templates available, these are even more than what you can see here and I do highly recommend you explore these because you can get good ideas for ways that you might be able to use the tool, this gives you some good starting points. I can just click use template to select one of these and then it's all set up for me in the file with like a layout, a structure for how I can go about using this template to get value from it. Once you're in, you can move everything around though and basically do whatever you want. But for the purposes of today's video, we're actually gonna start with a blank file instead. So this right here is our giant, unlimited, infinite blank canvas that is FigJam. And if you've used Figma before, something you might be wondering is actually what makes a FigJam file different from a regular Figma file. And the big difference is this set of tools we have down the bottom here. FigJam has been especially built to help you ideate and brainstorm rather than to be designing you which is what Figma is for. So we have a limited tool set that really helps us to focus and get into those tasks. So let me just walk you through our options. We have the marker pen here, which you can use to draw anywhere on the canvas. Um, this is a bit janky when I do it with my trackpad, but it works really nicely on FigJam on iPad. We've got a highlighter as well, of course, as well as an eraser, which you can just click on anything to get rid of what you drew. <laughs> I actually really like using FigJam for wireframing websites. That's the first stage of my design process and I do that now in FigJam on iPad. So stay tuned, I'll have a separate video coming all about my process for that specifically. You don't have to rely on your ability to draw a shape though. We can also pull in a shape here from this panel. We have a bunch of different options and if I select a different shape, that's gonna be the one that sort of stays um, waiting for me in the toolbar for next time so it remembers what your last selection was. We can change the color of our shape here in this newly expanded color palette, which is very exciting. And if you want one that's just an outline of a shape instead, you can just turn off the fill and it'll only show you a border. You'll see as well as that the shape is set up that it's easy to just click into it and add some text. But if you don't wanna add text, the add text prompt disappears as soon as you click off the shape. You can of course add text that isn't uh, within a shape as well, just by clicking on this little T icon here, we'll type heading, and then we can use this little font size picker here. I personally never bother to set something in actual pixels. I always just use the very handy um, preset sizing that they have here. I think these preset options make it really easy and fast to have hierarchy in your type and just to like get the thoughts out on page, you know. Now, Something that I often use FigGem for is flows, or in my case, a sitemap. And a really great way you can do this is by connecting two shapes together. See, as I just hover over this shape here, it will automatically highlight and suggest that I can add another one to the side. So I can just click there and I get another shape to um, flow on in, in this flow I'm creating. Or if I wanted, I could connect these two shapes together by clicking here and just dragging out, dragging an arrow to connect it to the shape beside it. And this doesn't just add a visual connection with the arrow, but if I move this shape around as well, the arrows are gonna stay with it and it'll continue to connect to those shapes that I set up connections with. If you want to, you can also draw an arrow just by yeah, clicking on this little arrow icon. And then we have a few different options for the end point of the arrow as well. Here's an actual example of a uh, sitemap flow that we have set up. This is us planning the new hierarchy of convertkit.com. So I've used different color shapes to indicate different sections and I put that in a little key here as well. This is just something that I built by dragging in a shape and adding text. And uh, yeah, all of these little bubbles are connected to each other as well. This sitemap here has been so useful for myself and the rest of the site squad, the people who work on convertkit.com to get on the same page about where we're going with it. And because it's in FigJam, it's all collaborative. So this is like a live file that I can be in, that the team can be in at the same time and everyone can see what's happening, what's changing. Everyone can add to it if you have those permissions set and you can comment on it as well. So as you can see here, there's a little conversation between me and Colin, our SEO manager. Going back to our tools though, another really great use of FigJam is the sticky note feature. So this little square down here, as you can tell from the little turned up corner, isn't just another shape. This is actually a sticky note that if I drag it out, I can type 
my thoughts into. This is really great for using when you're doing a team brainstorming exercise. The sticky note will automatically have your name on it so you can tell who it was who added each idea or if you want you can turn off that by clicking on this little quill icon. And you can pick from lots of different colors for your sticky notes as well. Me and my team tend to pick one color per person so that even if we have the signature on the sticky note it's really easy visually just to see who added what. And of course I always pick the purple one. <laughs> Why this digital sticky note is great is not only does it work for brainstorming exercises with a remote team but you can also like make your sticky note bigger if you have more to say. So I could expand it to the side and it becomes like a wider sticky note and also if I just add more to it it'll automatically extend the more that I type. I really love using these for group activities. Here is an example of one that we worked on together as a brand team. We did a SWOT analysis of our brand and everyone added their own little sticky notes for their ideas of our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. This little setup here is using another fairly new feature of FigJam, which is sections. I'll just show you what that looks like here. If I added a section around all of this, not only does it give like a space on the screen to add certain thoughts to, like you saw in this one here, everyone knew which square to add the weaknesses to, which square to add the opportunities to, but also I can now pick this up and move it around and everything else will come with it, which is nice and easy. I can rename the section if I can spell correctly, which apparently I can't. And of course I can change the color of it as well, which is very helpful for color coding things, differentiating sections from each other. And if you want to keep things really on brand, you can always use this option here, which lets you type in hex code. <laughs> The set of options is great though, because again, FigJam is encouraging you to move quickly and not worry too much about the tool getting in the way of getting your idea out. So if you can just pick a random color that, you know, fits closest to what you need, then it'll save you time and save the hassle and you can keep the train of thought moving. The sticky note in particular is just one of the many reasons why it does feel like FigJam has been created for designers, for product teams to work together and collaborate. It mimics a lot of the things that we often do in real life, in person together in a room, you know, putting sticky notes up on a wall. And another thing that they have that is similar to that is this stamp option here where you can add a little dot to like vote on sticky notes in a way, um, add say like, yes, I agree with this one. This is something we, we often do in real life design sprints and things like that. There's a few other things here, like if you have a question about a certain part, then that could be added. You'll also see a dot of your own avatar, which you can use. That way it's really clear who is voting for what, I guess. <laughs> if I go back to our sitemap, you'll see we used the stamp tool to indicate the status or like future path of some of the different parts of our sitemap. So in my key here, anything in orange is just getting like a visual update. Anything without is getting a full redesign. Anything with the thumbs down is actually being excluded from our first pass of the site. Some of the other ways you can collaborate in FigJam are with the emoji here. If someone else is in the file at the same time, I can select this and then click somewhere on the screen and they will see these little shocked faces. <laughs> scrolling up. You can also use cursor chat, just type a backslash and then type in here. It'll follow around your cursor and the other people in the file will be able to see what you've typed. Then if I go ahead and actually save this file to our library, then because at ConvertKit we're on like a team account, we also see this audio chat option, which means that you don't have to get on a separate Zoom call or a Slack call or anything. You can just talk to each other right in the file and it's audio only, which I really like. Or of course, like you saw in my sitemap file, you could also click on the comment icon and leave a comment anywhere on screen. And then unlike the cursor chat, this one will actually remain on screen. So this is definitely good for asynchronous communication with your team. So those are the basics of how FigJam works, what the tools are, some ways you could use it. But if you wanna get more complicated, you can click on this little fun icon here. You'll see a bunch of stickers and things. And because FigJam is inside of Figma, you'll be able to access all of the components that you have saved into your design system as well, into shared libraries. To do that, we just come in here, we click add your own, and then we will select to add the ConvertKit marketing design system to the file. Then I get to see that right in here, I can come in and use the call out bubble that we have somewhere on our site and all of this functions as well. So I could click in here and um, type something new. 
which is very fun. Definitely check this out. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, a lot of shared libraries of stickers, of plugins, of widgets, as well as the templates that I showed you earlier. But I hope that this video gave you a good overview of the basics. So at least when you get into the tool, you know what you're doing and vaguely know what to click on. <laughs> as you can see, it's really powerful for something that on the surface looks so simple and it has become a vital part of my own design process through the wireframing, but also in the way that I work with my team on brainstorms, sitemaps, all of that sort of stuff. Check it out, it's linked in the description below and I'll see you next time. Bye.